Hello and welcome back to TNWKS, the Now We Know show, the show where we discuss a topic of interest and by the end we will have learnt something new and hopefully you will too. I'm Zach. I'm Buzz and I am pleased to say that we've got our cryptozoologist expert, Glenn, back in the studio. How you doing everybody? It's Happy Glenn! To be back. Yay, so it's the three of us in for a podcast on The Dog Man. The Dog Man. The Dog Man. If you enjoy the Now We Know Show podcast, support Zach World Productions on Patreon or join our members on YouTube for early access, ad-free content and exclusive episodes. Before we get into Dogman, it's time for a new segment to the Now We Know Show podcast and that is Quote of the Week. Quote of the Week. Yes. Do we have to sing a jingle? Quote of the Week. 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 So for Quote of the Week, instead of the Word of the Week, we are going to start introducing Quote of the Week. So at the end of the podcast, we are going to share an inspirational quote or even a funny quote. It could be literally any quote whatsoever that pops to mind at the end of the podcast. Righty-ho. Just for fun. Okay. There was one that I saw today, actually. Yeah. I'm not going to mention it. Okay. To the the end of the podcast. Maybe the end. We can have a comparison. Cross-comparison. That was was a a bizarre one. But anyway. (laughs) Right. Cryptozoology. This time, Glenn has come in to tell us all about the mysterious Dog man. Now, I'm really interested to hear about this. I am absolutely fascinated by this one. I haven't done too much research on it because I want to find out firsthand from Glenn all about Dog Man. So, when it comes to UK cryptozoology, what are we talking about? So, there has been a few reports of Dog Man in the UK, okay. um, some of which are quite plausible. Ooh. So is Dogman, just like um, Bigfoot, Yeti and all the rest of the things that we've covered in the past, is it a creature which we also find all over the world? Right, okay. Much like Bigfoot, um, it is found all over the world. Okay. Um, mostly, most sightings in North America, right. like the Bigfoot. Uh-huh. In fact, there's probably a lot of people who claim to see Bigfoot or Dogman and possibly getting the two mixed up. Right, okay, that's um, interesting. Dogman, even though sightings have gone back a few hundred years, it's quite a new phenomenon in the world of cryptozoology. Right. I've known about it for a while, um, 20 odd years, but I've never really got up to scratch on it until recently. Um, in fact, since last year, when a photograph was released by the authorities in Amarillo, Texas, mm-hmm. of a creature on a security camera near a zoo. I know the oh, one. Ah, yes, I can mm. recall that. I know the one, because I think we brought that up in our werewolf podcast with Sarah oh, Downey. Yes. possible. And yes. I pulled that photograph up because I wanted to show her that. Mm. That was very telling. Yes. So that brings up the question, is Dogman a werewolf? The issue with werewolf is, the story goes that it's a man that turns into a wolf. Yep. Mm. Yeah, whereas Dogman is, there's no such backstory of it uh, being a lycanthrope. Mm. Right. So, is this a creature that is just, it's a creature, like big Bigfoot, and it, that's it. Yes. Yes. Right. Um, Could it be mixed, mistaken for a werewolf? Oh, quite absolutely. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I've got to ask you at this point, what do you think of werewolves? Just briefly, uh, werewolves are something, they're kind of more supernatural, would you not say? Werewolves. So are they something that Glenn is uh, a believer in, werewolves? I believe in werewolves, but not probably in the way you think. So I, I believe in werewolves along the medical grounds, like lycan- lycanthropy, yep. where it's a, a mental illness. Right. And this is something interesting that's, that, that I've come to think of recently, and that is with the epidemic of, of drugs in North America, mm-hmm. um, bath salts and, and other designer drugs like that. Okay, I've not heard of that one. Um, I've heard of bath salts, but yeah. I take it this isn't what you would normally take a bath with. No, no. <laughs> it's, um, 
it's a psychotropic compound. Right, okay. Um, and a lot of people who take this become animalistic. Um, there has been a few occasions, and I'm sorry for the young people listening to this, okay. but there has been a few occasions where actual people have attacked people and eaten their face Ooh. off. This is a real thing oh that dear. is happening Ooh. in the States oh dear. Well, due to these designer drugs. So I think within everybody, there is possibly something that maybe goes back... Uh, thousands and thousands of years in in the uh, psychology of the human mm-hmm. but a more condition base instinct yes um, so that in itself you might not grow fangs you might not grow uh, facial hair um, but your mind is that of a wolf and that that's what like is. Well, you then take on the persona yes. so to speak yes mm. so, right. so that is what I consider I, I wouldn't think a werewolf Ergo, correct me please, wouldn't really come into cryptozoology because they're talking about unknown creatures that haven't been, like Bigfoot, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, so a werewolf is not cryptozoology, or is it? Um, it depends who you want to listen to and okay. what you want to believe. Let's, let's stick that on the shelf. Mm. But Dogman is a creature that just stays the same. It's yeah. not a human that turns into Dogman. Yes, it's it's possible. It's um, it's some kind of step in evolution for right. for wolves. Um, now, I, I'm sure everybody has probably seen some silly TikTok videos of their cute family dog suddenly gets up and walks around on their back legs. Yep, yep. Again, possibly a step in evolution, but dogs, you know, just sometimes prefer to walk on their back legs and not so on four legs. So if you were talking of, of a big dog or a wolf hound or a wolf itself if it stood on its hind legs it's going to look yeah now you take for example one of the largest wolves in the world the alaskan gray wolf mm-hmm. on its hind legs it's going to be six six and a half foot tall easily yeah. mm-hmm. very imposing mm. very imposing so in the uk you briefly mentioned about the uh, sightings go back for hundreds of years. So, sort of, what kind of? How, how far are we talking about? Well, Oops, when sorry. Does... So, I meant the sightings in in the US have gone right. back that far. Um, Europe, Europe. Um, there was a situation in France, uh, 1730, 1740, in a place called uh, Gévaudan, um which is south of France where a wolf, a very large wolf, if you believe the reports um, and the artist's renditions of, um, of what the witnesses claim to have seen, this was a huge wolf, the uh, size of a small pony, um, and some of the eyewitness reports said it did rise up onto its hind legs. Uh-huh. Now, this wolf was responsible, possibly more than one wolf, there's no way of knowing, but this wolf, uh, there, there was about 300 killings of mm-hmm. humans, wow. of children, uh, farmers around this, this area in France. It's well documented um, in France. Now, they sent some, they sent the army in, they sent hunters in, they sent uh, zoologists in. It's got to um, be a base for a movie right there. <laughs> Brotherhood of the Wolf. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. With Mark Duskoskas. Not oh, a bad yeah. film, not a bad film. Oh, it's been a while since I've seen that. But it's very, very loose. Uh, okay. That's not the one where they've got a lion in it, is it? Yes. Ah, right. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. one. Yes, that's I haven't lion. seen that in ages. Mm. Yeah, it's okay. been a while. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's what that's based on. That's really interesting. Mm. Okay. Um, so anyway, they caught this wolf, mm-hmm. and they killed it, and they stuffed it. And for a while, it was on display in one of the royal palaces in Paris. Then... It went. It went missing. Nobody knows where. And the killing started again. Oh. Okay. I mean, in, in Norse, Norse mythology, uh, a lot of the people would wear animal skins. Mm. And when they put the skins on, then they transformed into that animal, whether yeah. it be a wolf or a bear, or in some cases, a swan even. But, uh, yeah, so... Well, Native Americans have something similar in their Skin beliefs. change. Yeah, skin... Berserker? No, uh, skin... berserkers are more kind skin of... Walkers is skin yeah, walkers. Skin walkers is the Native American term. Which is brings me to an interesting point. Um, so some some tribal Americans, Native American Americans, um, they believe that... They have a spirit animal, mm-hmm. and they can mm-hmm. 
change from their human form into their spirit animal. So some claim that it's possible that these dogmen have, for whatever reason, they've, they've started changing into the wolf, and for whatever reason, they, they can't continue, and then they are trapped They're in sort that stuck form in this limbo right. of dog, of between dog, dog and human. Yes. Right, OK. Oh, interesting. So in the UK, when does it start being a thing that people are starting to spot this? Um, I've, I've only looked back at the one incident which um, has intrigued me, mostly because it's quite a local incident mm -hmm. um, in, in Cambridgeshire. And um, it involves a US Air Force base back in 1973 or 74. Um, now, when I first heard about this, it seemed uh, just just a very small incident where an airman, um, actually no, it wasn't an airman, it was a, it was a mechanic uh, working on one of the fighter planes, um, saw something leap two fences coming towards him and as it approached the light, he noticed it was a large dog-like creature walking on hind legs. Hmm. He jumped in the, the fighter, closed the cockpit, and didn't come out until the following morning. He was that scared. Wow. Now, after looking into this again recently, um, I found out there was actually a police report put in, and there was reports of gunfire around the same time as well. That's all I've, I've been able to dig up. I do have... A friend, a uh, retired US Air Force colonel, who was stationed in the UK at the time. I've not been able to talk to him yet, but I will be shortly. Okay. So, any other reports? I think I read about uh, up in Yorkshire, um, on the west, you know, really the east coast. There's a peninsula. Bridlington, Dames Dyke. That's the one. That's yeah. That's the one, yeah. Uh, yeah that, again, Dogman pops up there. It, it's, it, this is funny, <laughs> Yeah, there's been numerous sightings of, of this dog man in that area. Um, there have been a few, the ones I was looking at was there was a few uh, uh, twitchers that were, there's like um, a, a station on the top of the cliffs where they can watch the seabirds and look yeah. out to sea. And then they kept being watched by That's right, some yeah. creature that was up in the This story's ringing a bell, headland. it's ringing a bell. And uh, they were using their torches and they described it being like a dog, but that it stood up, you know, like yeah. a man. Uh, so that one, so that, carry that's, on. That's so, a well-known so one. So go on, fill us in on that. Um, well, the area, Danes Dyke, is, there's a lot of paranormal activity that goes on around there. I've never been there, and yet I have very, very early memories of the beach around there. So you've never been there, but you have memories of the I beach? I used to have a reoccurring nightmare as a kid. Right. And I remember it vividly. And then recently, while researching Dogman, uh -huh. I found out about this place. Right. And I was like, wow. Gosh, it's... I yeah. know this place. Whoa. <laughs> This this has got sort of like um, sort of it, you're reminding me of uh, the howling. Do you remember in there? Mm, yes. Where where yep. they yeah. There's pictures of this cove. Yeah, and then yeah, they, yeah. The woman finds herself there. And it's like looking at the picture and then suddenly going, I'm actually here. Now this this is the bit that's really messed up. Okay. My reoccurring nightmare. Yep. Um, I mean, I I was young. I was maybe five six years old. Oh, that time. young. Right. Yeah. I was hiding in a burnt-out car on this beach okay. because this... I was being stalked. Uh -huh. I'm not going to say a dog man. Right. I was being stalked by the wolf from the Free Little Pigs cartoon. Oh, I know. What, the old-fashioned one? Yep, where he's, he's wearing the, the dungarees and a top hat. He's got a really hat. long snout. Yeah. Oh, crikey. That's... Now, that is so a, a dog kid, man. It's a... an anim anamorphic uh, yeah. wolf. Yeah. yeah. So did you see that as a kid and then it just got stuck in your head? Yeah, or? yeah. But how comes that you have this connection to that particular beach I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, I have actually spoken to one of your previous guests, uh, 
and we are planning on a trip up there at some point in the near future. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to ask. Would this, would this be Mickey Bolden? <laughs> it would be Mickey, yes. Yeah. Oh, this okay. would be very interesting. We might be interested it's, in that certain yeah. trip. I would love to follow up with that one. Another, now <laughs> we know show on the road. Now, I did come up with uh, doing a little bit little bit of research. To say I, I didn't want to spoil this particular podcast by looking too much into it because I was wanting to obviously learn from your exp- expertise on the subject but uh, there was one that did pop up on google which referred to hatfield park which is very close to us it back is, in yeah. 1990 where somebody was hiking through there and they got followed by a creature that they described as having a head like an alsatian and that uh, they called a friend to come pick them up because they were out for a for a for a hike friend came to collect them and he said when he got in the car and he could still see these this thing in the bushes and as they pulled away it stood up right and he was said to his friend did you see that and he said no i didn't see anything i just said but but he said and then like you said he kept having recurrent nightmares Mm. about this creature and being stalked by this creature that's creepy the reason that sort of rang a bell is because again it's a close one to where we live mm. being it was Hatfield yeah oh, so. um, I'll, I'll be honest I've not heard that one oh right okay but, uh, I shall certainly yeah. be looking into yeah, it have now a, have a little, have a yeah, little like you say it. it's very close to us yeah so, yeah. so um, worth a visit uh, and there's another particular place uh, oh where is it you're, 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 you're bound to know this very well where you get a lot of these kind of crypto canic chase. Canic chase. That's there we are. I think we've brought that up in the we yeah. have yeah. Yeah. So um, do we have sightings along there? Um, people claim to have been stalked by something, mm-hmm. but they haven't been able to visually see what it is. But um, yeah, it's possible. Yeah, because dogs in English and Anglo-Saxon mythology have, have always had this kind of connection to dark the dark side the devil and things like this yeah you get these the black dogs and there's, uh, there's yes, hell I've, hounds I, I've, I've seen a black dog yeah oh we have yeah, do you uh, want to tell us about that yeah it's uh i was traveling from my home from my parents home to my home in in puckridge and um we used to go through the country lanes Okay, and, for the, for the um, listeners, where else is Puckridge? Puckridge is on the A10. It's um, if you're travelling from Hertfordshire to Stansted Airport. Right. Okay. It's okay. it's that gives people about two depth. thirds of the way there. Okay, it gives you kind of location. Yeah, but um, yeah, we were driving through, or just coming up to a place called Levens Green, mm-hmm. and um, I was in a little old mini clubman at the time, um, and yeah, we just went round this corner. And there it was, walking along the road towards us. How would you describe this dog? I would... Hound. <laughs> to me, it just looked like a, a scruffy black lab. Okay. But, like all the legends and the stories say, it did have glowy, fiery red eyes. Oh, wow. Well, that's totally going to catch your attention, yeah. isn't it? Now, with the black dog, they say if you see one, it's either a good omen yeah. or a bad omen. Yeah, it's usually seen as a bad 50, omen. 50 chance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, I got divorced after that, so it might have been good, it might have been bad. I don't know. <laughs> I know I know there was one that was uh, it's a very well-known one. Um, you're bound to know this and I can't remember the church. So this particular church, the congregation were in at service mm-hmm. when there was a massive storm, crashing of thunder and lightning outside the church, and then the doors smashed open, and there was this huge, supposedly, the legend goes, huge black hound I've with heard it, yeah. red eyes, and it killed two parishioners in the church, overturned all the... Um, benches and everything all over the place and the church even today and i can't remember the name of the church but it has scorch marks where it supposedly clawed the front door of the church and they've still got these claw marks in the door so what i'm trying to say is you the idea of hellhounds and hounds and things are they you know they they go very very far back in english and anglo-saxon history so do you think these are connected to the sightings of dogman no, I, I don't think it is. Um, right. I think it's 
I think it's more along the lines of, there's, there's a couple of things to me, I think it, what it could be. Like I mentioned before, the evolution of, of dogs and wolves. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is their next step um, of just wanting to walk upright. Um, obviously, there's Dude. stories like that. Now, depending when they were, stories get exaggerated over times. Um, but the other thing that I look at when I think of Dogman, and there's a possibility that, yes, they're out there, no, they're not actually dogs. Right. Okay. Mm. Now I can't explain the ones in 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 the UK so much because we don't have this particular animal in the UK. But in the US and parts of Europe, they have bears. Mm -hmm. Now bears with a serious case of mange. Yeah, I've seen. Look like the most. Hideous, hideous, demonic-looking creatures. Have you, have you ever out seen there? one? Say, no. You see a bear with mange; it's literally like hairless, Ooh. and they look. They, yeah, you, know, you could imagine a bear. Obviously, they do stand up on their hind legs. They do, yes. Without even thinking about it, it's just one of the things that a bear does. So, yeah, yeah, mm. that is pretty, creepy to look at. Pr very. Mm. Uh, after the podcast, we'll have to. But in fact, while you talk, I'll see if I can punch one up. <laughs> okay, yeah. Carry on. So, yeah, so so you've got these bears that... Yeah, I, I honestly think it's probably just more natural uh, than supernatural out there. Hmm. So how would that relate, though, to the UK? Because obviously, Again, Glenn, I, can't I don't think we've that. probably got any mangy bears yeah, that, are, that or, are roaming or around. wolves. Um, do, you, do you think, I mean, honestly, I'm going to ask you right at this stage, do you think that Dogman is something that exists in the UK or are people thinking they're seeing something that they're not or there's just some people that think it's a lark to put uh, a werewolf mask on and lurk around in the woods i want to believe but until i see some form of concrete proof yeah i so you're skeptical in the uk yeah i'm skeptical in the uk i will say that the, that that one that i referred to in hatfield park the gentleman there did say because when he was out hiking um, it wasn't the only time that he'd had uh, a run-in with this creature. Mm -hmm. I think he said there was another occasion which was in a very remote place, late at night. So therefore, he felt that nobody would have been, nobody would have known that it was mm -hmm. worth dressing up as a creature to be in that place at that time. Yeah, but so also I mean. at that time in the dark, uh, your mind plays tricks on you. Oh, I think you mentioned this before, yeah. didn't you? I mean, I, I've been through the woods and in the day, and I've seen things which, to be fair, it looked like a dog stalking us. Mm. We got up close, it was just a log laying on the <laughs> ground. Yeah, there you go. Now, I've punched up, for the listeners, I've punched up a picture of a oh. mangy bear. Oh, dear. Uh, if you can imagine that standing up on its hind legs. Yeah, I, could, I can see, yeah. Yeah, that would not be... That would not be... Uh, you know, not, you, not the most friendly looking but, of. Okay, there's another one. Now that one's still got hair on the back of his neck. You got to say that that, that looks very werewolf like. Kind of Werewolfy. But it's a bear. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. I think we just cracked a case. <laughs> <laughs> In America, anyway. Yeah. I, I, um, honestly, I, I actually can see. So there you have the sightings of Dogman. You have a creature which is seen. On all fours, I've got to say from the little bits I've read, on all fours and then standing on its hind legs, hmm. having a snout and a face like a German shepherd, but having the features of a human being, looking at those pictures of mangy bears, hmm. I can see I can yeah. see that. I'm going to throw a little spanner in the works here again oh, now. This is why you're in. We love having so, our experts um, in. Bigfoot. Yeah, Bigfoot. Yeah. The general consensus is it's a primate. And I know I've said this in a previous podcast, yep. I believe that there are different kinds of Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. you've, you've got um, your ones down the south of uh, America. Oh, they were the skunk, skunk apes. Skunk apes. Skunk apes. Um, and then its relatives, which are more prone to being up north, Alaska, Canada, around that way. So being a primate... Um, and people have said this as well when they've seen what they thought was Bigfoot or possibly Dogman. Mm -hmm. They've described it as being baboon-like in face. Now, okay. a baboon's face, quite a long yeah, snout. Yeah, they do have a long snout. Yeah, so that is, again, 
maybe maybe it is Dogman. Maybe it is a, a wolf on hind legs. So or maybe it's a different. So you're thinking instead of, of Bigfoot. So instead of being a a, a, um, a dog, as such, you're going primate, possibly. Possibly, yeah. Interesting. Now, what do you think though about the people that then say that these creatures aren't physical creatures; that they are some kind of um, spirit being, spirit being that appears when they want to appear? How does that sit in with the sightings uh, and the legend behind Dogman? Because we do get that with Bigfoot. We've said that before. Mm. What was it called? The Zanu? Zanu, yeah. You know, and that's like they come from the interdimensional creatures that only appear when they want you to that see them. That was an interesting Facebook group. And speak to you via, via dream speak or mm. something. Anyway, I don't want to go too far off target. No, that's fine. That's talk fine. about Bigfoot. <laughs> but, uh, you know, as far as Dogman's concerned, what's your feelings on that being some kind of spiritual being rather than well see not so much spiritual but your your point you made there about interdimensional okay or maybe I'll possibly, say interdimensional being or possibly even alien right so um so if you look at egyptian mythology yeah you have uh, uh, a lot of people say that their gods are possibly from the stars right so like anubis now yes exactly you take anubis yep. uh body of a man head uh, of a jackal, jackal yeah. mm -hmm. um and again there's your dog man they do say that um if you look at the sphinx uh, you know the, the the body of the sphinx which is supposedly the body of a lion mm. but it is so weather worn compared to the head of the pharaoh that they feel that at some point in prehistory that it probably was a jackal head that was on that yeah, and they I've, got I've carved into a pharaoh head by a later pharaoh, hmm. which is why the body doesn't really Match tally up. up with the head. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, more than possible. There is so much about e Egyptian culture that... Uh, so that we, get, we, we are now... Diving off onto a Stargate tangent now. Oh, I was thinking bit, that. I was bit. thinking that. <laughs> so, good movie. Yeah, it's a good it movie. Is, yeah. So, what are your feelings on that? I mean, you know. Stargate or, or just Egyptian <laughs> mythology. Yeah. yeah. Um, I. Again, it's just one possible variant mm. of what it might be. I haven't got all the answers. I wish I had all the answers, but if I did have all the answers, life would be boring afterwards. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's again. I I'm kind of more along the lines that it's a more natural thing, um, a bear with mange or a, a wolf that's decided to walk. How I'd would, love to be proven wrong. So how would you explain the sightings in the UK? Because I can see exactly what you're saying. Mm. That if you're in Europe where they do have bears, and if you're in the states where they have bears, yes, most definitely that could easily be be mistaken as something like dog man but obviously we are getting sightings and have had sightings in the uk so what's your kind of feelings on that well do you think there the... is something out there that's lurking around or do we have our own uk bred werewolves that pop up once in a while i don't think it's it's when i mentioned earlier about werewolves being a, a more psychological condition mm -hmm. so I think possibly if there are people out there at the moment now we do have and I, I try not to get political here but we do have a big issue with homelessness in the UK yeah, yeah, yeah. and it goes hand in hand with um, mental problems mm -hmm. um, so yeah there's quite possibly uh, people out there living in the wild decide to you know yeah it's a better life to live in the wild I think you're talking about my mates, the bushcrafters and wild campers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they don't really go around. Uh... That's it. That's all it is. Yeah. That's what, I think we've just come up with an answer on this one. It's my. Oh, I, I know for a fact that you know you get bushcrafters and wild campers out there in places like the Kill the Forest and places like that, and they. I can hear something. I can hear something. Yeah, you know, there's something out there, and it turns out you watch another video, and there's another camp 300 yards away yeah. in the dark with another load of didn't, bushcrafters. Didn't we saying, watch a video or something <laughs> where there was something lurking outside somebody's tent? Yeah, there was. We watched was during the week, wasn't we it? We watched a video. It, it, I, the guy actually is, is, is um, can't remember the channel, but uh, it's a very nice chap, and he did a follow-up video, which I don't think you saw. Oh, but okay. what caught my attention 
was it, it was it some, very familiar. something walking around my tent at two o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've... I think I've seen it. And that caught my attention. So I watched the video and he's in his tent and he's like, there is somebody walking around, somebody or something walking around my tent. It's two o'clock in the morning. He's going, I'm, I, excuse my French, I'm buggered if I'm going out there. But crunch, crunch, there was something. Protected by your nylon. <laughs> Protected nylon. by your nylon. <laughs> We've all seen dog soldiers where the zip goes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and anyway, um, but I, he had a follow-up video, and he was. It turned out he was accused by a lot of people on YouTube that what he'd done is a video which was purely clickbait. Mm. Yeah. Right. Anyway, uh, he was at the time. Do you remember? He was texting his friend who was camped a little way away from him, and mm. his friend was texting back saying there is definitely something walking around my tent as well. So they were like. <laughs> both, both of them being doing bushcraft videos and they they camped away from each other so they could do their videos but something was stalking around the tents yeah. now I kind of know what that feels like because I've camped in the New Forest before where in the middle of the night you've suddenly got New Forest ponies yeah. and they walk past yeah. and they twang and big old yeah, things <laughs> yeah and they, tw- they, they the hooves catch your, your guy ropes and twang and the tents shaking about and stuff and it can be really quite disconcerting. Yeah. And I remember being at one place in the New Forest, this is a good few years ago, and there must have been uh, 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 what do you call it? Where'd you put your dogs for holidays? Kennels. Kennels, that's it. There must have been a kennels in the distance somewhere because I could hear these dogs howling. And oh. then my tent, his tent started to go twang. <laughs> it's like, and I, snuffle, 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 snuffle. What on earth is this? And that's enough for you to say, yeah, I ain't going, I'm not going out the tent. I'm mm. staying in here. And it went away. Mm. And in the morning when I came out, hoof prints all around the place. Yeah. So it's obviously what it was. Now, a similar thing actually happened to me the other week. Oh, oh I yes. went on a, just a random hike. You went for a walk about, didn't you? Yeah, about 10 miles. Yep. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to go camping. Yep. Yeah, just half wild, half wild camping, the voo for those people. Half the voo. So it was kind of half open to the elements. Mm-hmm. Um, had a fire. Had to restock that with some wood a few times during the night but there was this tapping next to my head just outside the tent like something grazing across the outside <laughs> and I didn't know what it was but it was kind of like a persistent it was there for a while it was like getting up having a look no nothing nothing yeah nothing. I don't know it must have been like the wind or and something you weren't touching any branch, you weren't, you weren't, you I don't, any branches no, no not really so, oh, right. There was a barking deer around. Oh, yeah, we know that. They, they, <laughs> yeah, and the other one in the UK is uh, if, when you get the uh, yeah. foxes screaming, they can sound quite eerie. Yeah, but especially anyway, in the dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so my point was this guy was accused of doing clickbait mm. on his video and that it was all made up. But anyway, he has... When you're doing wild camping, a lot of the time what you do is you get a permission from a landowner because yeah. for those people listening that don't, don't know, you... There is no, apart from on Dartmoor, which is controversial at the moment, there technically isn't any right to roam in England. So you, while camping, you need the permission of the landowner. Yeah. And him and his mate had the permission of the local farmer. And then it turned out that the farmer's wife had seen lights oh, in the woodland. Okay. And when her husband came back, she said, you know, that I've seen lights in the woodland. So the farmer that he knows had taken a walk out there and yeah. he'd been walking around and recognised his tent because he'd seen his camp before. And just mm. like, oh, yeah, that's, that's Bob or whatever. <laughs> and gone home again. So, And so what he did is he actually did prove that somebody was walking around the tents, yeah. but it was yeah. the farmer and the farmer didn't want to disturb them. Once he recognised who it was, he didn't want to disturb them. So mm. he went back. So it wasn't clickbait. And it was happening, and it did happen, but for somebody in that position, quite eerie. Mm. (laughs) See, I mean, with your fantastic facial hair, Buzz. Oh, yeah, yes. If I saw you lurking around through the trees (laughs) uh, during dusk, Uh and you were maybe half a foot taller, okay. But even then, when it's getting dark, when I got my when I got my slingbacks on, (laughs) the the light plays (laughs) tricks on you. Um, yeah, I mean, yes, there is a there is a skunk a monkey bit. there. <laughs> <laughs> Buzz the skunk monkey. <laughs> I wonder what that smell was. Yeah, no, I've been busy all day. <laughs> um, but no, what we talked about um, before about explaining UK sightings. Uh, something I, I did read recently um, was. 
but people who have seen these these dog men, mm -hmm. um, they claim that you will only see dog man if it wants you to see it. Okay. Right. So, are we talking like an adaptive camouflage or something there? Yes, yeah. Um, again, pretty much uh, the same as Sasquatch. Um, Is it going back to that photo manipulation thing? Uh, yeah. Oh, God. I was trying to think what it was. Um, paradoilia. Something like that. Okay. That sounds like a good word of the week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't quote me on it. I know it's something along those lines. Parachuting with doilies. Yeah. <laughs> That's not going to work. No. Um, yeah, it's... Again, it's, it's that's if you're walking down along the lines of a spiritual thing. Okay. Um, but you did mention about the camouflage of the uh, North American wolves. Yes. Um, it's it's a very grey, earthy grey kind of colour. Well, it's 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 um, it's it's evolution at its best. Yes. It's making yeah. something disappear mm. in its natural environment. But interestingly, um, somebody shot and killed a, an Alaskan grey wolf in the last couple of years, mm -hmm. and um, it uh, it went viral at the time because this thing was huge. We are talking the size of a small horse, easily. Right. Um, and and they did tests and they did find out that it was uh, an Alaskan grey wolf, but um, it really did not look like your standard wolf. Okay. It was, and it didn't turn back into a human. No, it didn't. No. Okay. What was that good werewolf movie we watched? That was kind of like a wolf hunting people. Do you Tim remember wolf? that one? Mm. Do you remember that one? We watched it. I think it was on Netflix. Oh. Can you give me more? Feed me more. Uh, I think it was a foreign one. Okay. A foreign one, maybe. And there was like a cave, uh, and she shot it with a silver bullet, but uh, her daughter got bitten. Oh, oh. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ringing, I'm a, ringing bell. a bell. Did she climb down into the cave? Yes. Yes. And yes. she got attacked by it. Yep. And it was quite brutal, very violent. Okay. But her daughter then turned into a werewolf. Right. No, I do remember it now you mention that scene, but I can't think of the name of the film. Ah, oh, shucks. Ah, oh, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll come up with it after the podcast. Okay. So. Uh, Maybe I can stick a photo in. So, what do you think your chances are, or any of our chances, of actually seeing a. Dogman in the UK. My brain wants to tell me very slim. Okay. Uh, but honestly, I would love to be proven wrong. Mm -hmm. um, which is why, at some point in the near future this year, I will be checking out um, the area near to us uh, where the uh, incident happened at the US Air Force Base. Right. Now I did. Now I, this is probably clickbait. But I want to show you this because it came up within my searches. Okay, I had, I did a screenshot of this, and it was supposedly a hiker in Kentucky that went missing. Mm -hmm. They found his camera, and this was one of the last pictures that was on his film reel. So now this may be clickbait. You might know about this, and you can say the buzz, absolute joke. But I remember when we were talking about Bigfoot. You told us about the. Uh, you told us about was it the Russian uh, hikers? Rock that, apes. Rock that, that yeah, the um, and there was the a Yeti. and there was a, a, a camera film there which had pictures with the something. Of, love pass yeah. Yeah. So I thought I'd run this by you. Mm -hmm. Okay, it might be something you see, might be something you haven't seen, or it might be an absolute load of dinkum. But supposedly this was found on somebody's camera. Wow, that's not what I thought you were going to show me. It's meant to be like well, the last shot on this missing hiker's camera. Uh, I mean, it's definitely not a recognised wolf. Uh, it's definitely upright. It's definitely upright. It's very skinny. I mean, all the yeah, reports the arms, of dog men the I've seen, they're quite very, broad. Yeah, they look kind of very human arms. Mm -hmm. But that head is completely disproportionate to the body. Yeah, It's so. not a recognisable mask. So it's it's. I mean, yeah, technically, a custom job. Technically, it could be could be photoshopped, but mm. I don't know. But is it something? It could that be you, AI generated. Have now. you come across this one before? I haven't. And if I walked through the woods and saw that, I I bought the other one. I need new underwear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that that is quite a freaky one. But while we're talking about um, fake images or video and dog man. Oh yes. Um, well, I know you've got a bag in the corner of the studio. <laughs> yeah. This is. Um, we we get on to him in a second. Before I, I mention that, well, there's something. There's a bag. <laughs> he, he did tell me before he's brought a friend with him. Uh oh. 
Um, yeah, I just want to quickly talk about the Gable video. The Gable video. Yeah, I haven't heard of this. No, no, please, enlighten us. It's only come to my attention in the last six months of this particular video. Um, it was for the early 70s, I believe. Okay. Um, Wouldn't that, no, that would be slightly later than the uh, that, that famous uh, Bigfoot one then. That was oh, late the, the Patterson. Yeah, so um, that was late sixties. Yeah, wasn't it? that was late sixties. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the Gable video, it's it's an amazing bit of footage. There's um, ten or fifteen minutes of it, and uh, gosh, normally when you get these kind of videos, it's like just a seconds. Seconds. Mm. Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, that, towards look. the end of it, okay. they're driving along the road, and, and yeah. the camera picks up something on the side of the road. Okay. Um, in a crouching position, stalking. Okay. Then this creature, it doesn't stand upright, but it does run in a very otherworldly way towards the camera. Right. And it looks incredible. You can see... So these people are in a car, are they? Yeah. Um, I think they at some point they get out of the car. Uh-huh. Um, and it does go for them. Right. So they get a, a, a very blurry because obviously it's the seventies. The cameras aren't that great. Well, at the time they would have must have been using a cine. Cine, camera. cine eight, yeah, something yeah. like that. Um, no, I take it there's no sound on it then. No, there isn't. There yeah. isn't. Um, there's also a bit of footage of a, a local police officer picking up pieces. And it does oh, look pieces of people. Yes, not, and it, ooh, it, no, I thought picking up pieces. Yeah, it could have mm, been. An, <laughs> it is an incredible bit of something footage. Else. And it's also an incredible fake. Right, it is a fake. Uh, yes, um, it was actually filmed in, I believe, 1987. Uh -huh. um, and there was this whole thing back in the mid 70s with a, a DJ called Steve Cook who released a song called Legend or Legend of the Dog Man. Right. And it was a whole publicity thing okay. uh, that somebody decided to do uh, to go along with this. Right, and that footage was never seen. And what, and then they release it later in the 80s? Or, um, or did they make I've it? I've only 80s? seen it recently. Okay. But I've got a lot of books which with stuff in which dates back from the mid 90s all the way through hundreds of years. I mean, that's where I first read about the Javadan creature. The what? what? The beast of Javadan. Javadon. Right, okay. Um, and there was nothing in there about this Gable video. Right. Which is why I think a lot of people were convinced it was real. But no, they have come out and said it's fake now. Okay. Um, also another, there are two very well-known incidents in North America. There's the Michigan Dog, Mi Michigan dog Man, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is seen, apparently it comes out every seven years. Oh, gosh. Yes. Like Jeepers Creepers. Yes, I was say yeah, Jeepers that's Creepers. That's the first thing I thought of. Um, and then there's the Bray Road Beast incident. The Bray Road Beast. Yes. I'm not sure if I've heard of that. Yeah, it's, it's ringing, ringing a bell. A, it is ringing a bell. Mm. Might have a book, book somewhere. What a lot of people don't realise is these places are very close together. They've mm -hmm. just got one of the Great Lakes in between them. Yeah, the Lake Michigan, yeah. Yeah. So, um, is it the same one, creature? Just going right. on a jaunt somewhere? What, popping in the lake, swimming yeah. and coming out again? Well, it's a possibility. Maybe. Hollow Earth. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of a Red Dwarf reference there. Uh, what that one? Anyone got a pop a the size of Lake, Lake Michigan? Michigan? <laughs> that's it. Ah, uh, that's the curry monster. Yes, that's the it. episode DNA in DNA. season four. There you go. Right, so right. <laughs> do you want to meet Snoopy? Yeah, yes, who's Snoopy? Snoopy. All I can Snoopy. see is that there is a bag in the corner of the studio. Mm. Okay, um, here we go. This this is a fella, he, he spends most of his time in the garage. Um... And comes out for Halloween. You better, you better pull him, <laughs> pull him out the bag then. Give him some air. Ooh, okay. Oh my goodness me! <laughs> that is that, that is, is something to look at. Something, something freaky. Now, if you mm. put that on in a in a forest, you are definitely going to uh, definitely going to freak people out. Uh, all I can say, ladies and gentlemen, is we have got. It is basically like like a a werewolf head mm. with a huge main neck piece uh, which must right, go right over your shoulders down your back and your front um, it's the eyebrows it's the eyebrows it's the eyebrows the, the face is so for me it's always the, been the eyes because they are glass 
Oh, oh God, yeah, yeah, it's got glass eyes. It's very, yeah, wow. So, what on earth? I mean, this doesn't look like your standard Halloween uh, mask that you would buy for a werewolf. Um, so. No, it's not. It's, so it's what's the not story? actually a mask at all. What's it's, the story behind? It's part of an animatronic puppet used in a... Well, that would be human size, then. Uh, well, yeah, it's similar to the way some of the Muppets work from the Muppet Show. Oh, yeah. Okay. You would have somebody in a costume... With one hand working the head and the mouth, yep. Right. Yep. a fake arm not being used, and a real arm yep. that would be used. Mm -hmm. So it was along the lines of that. Now this was made, custom made for a KFC advert. Okay, <laughs> which was <laughs> hang on, KFC and werewolves. Yeah, Kentucky Fried Werewolf. How does this kind of come together there? Well. It was never shown in the UK okay. because it was deemed too scary. Too, okay. I, I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> is, this, it, is this what happens to, uh, was it Colonel Sanders when there's a full moon? <laughs> um, it's finger looking good. Yeah, it was, oh. it was shown in Europe um, and it was advertising KFC's barbecue chicken wings. Okay. And were warning you that if you eat these chicken wings, you might become a bit of an animal. Right. right. Um, so it did come with um, air bladders as well, with teeth and tongue and, and part of the back as well, pulsating. It's a fantastic, uh, mm. fantastic mask, if you um, will, want of a better word. <laughs> I just uh, thought you might like to see them as we're talking about. We'll have to, take a, we'll have to yeah, take a picture. I, I, I'm going to take a picture and put it on the thumbnail. Oh, yeah. That'd okay. be amazing. So, so anybody who's listening to this, they can look at the thumbnail and they can see what Snoopy looks like. <laughs> uh, that is crazy. Um, so do you think that uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken advert is knocking around out there? It is available on YouTube, as long as you know what to type in. Okay. okay. That is free. And how did you manage to get hold of Snoopy then? Um, so both myself and uh, my ex-partner used to work for Ridley Scott. Right. And it was one of his um, subsidiaries that used to make adverts for certain things, okay. and, and it was them that produced the KFC oh, advert. Oh, wow. Right, so there it is, sitting in the uh, props department. Yeah, so they, they said to my ex-partner, um, on your way out, can you can you throw the wolf in the, in the skip? <laughs> can you just throw the, the, the full human-sized wolf in the skip? So I get a phone call so asking if I wanted a werewolf. I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course, any of course. rational person. Any rational person would say that. Of course. And so, and that's when uh, Snoopy was rescued. Yes. Because can you imagine that gone off to a rubbish dump, <laughs> tipped out the <laughs> back of a lot. What the hell? What the hell's that? You know, some, it said we don't have raccoons actually in the UK. A raccoon gets inside of it and starts running around. <laughs> Funny enough, I used to have a neighbour with a pet raccoon. Yeah? yeah. What, in the UK? Ooh. I used to take it on a walk with, on a lead. Okay. Oh. It wasn't called Rocket, was it? I don't know. It was a while ago. <laughs> so what other things can you expand upon? regarding Dogman in the UK? Much like Bigfoot, um, I think we're very limited on, on wild spaces where something like this could hide. I mean, although it is said that we do have big cats that people just easily miss. Mm, but yes, they, we do. They have been and around for years. If there was Dogman, those big cats would quite possibly be a natural food source for Dogman. Mm. Wouldn't it go the other way? Would the cats eat Dogman or would Dogman? Depends who's the bigger. Yeah, I, I mean, if you believe the stories about Dogman, he is on a par with Bigfoot for size wise. Mm. Yeah, what about intelligence? Intelligence. Has anybody had an experience with Dogman? I have Dogman? read and, and seen interviews with people who claim to have seen Dogman, and one thing they always say is one, it just looks like pure evil, and two, you can see. It trying to work things out. Certainly, if that was that photograph that I showed you, yeah, that's pretty horrible. Mm, yeah. <laughs> if you were presented with that, you go, yeah, no, thank you. I think um, I'm going to sit this one out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, yeah, again, I think we would be finding more dead livestock around the mm -hmm. countryside. So, do you think it's really just um, miss sightings in the UK? I think so. I think so. Although you do feel that something, something happened with that air engineer. Yeah, um, he he must have seen something. Now, in the U.S. government, um, and again, it's uh, 
it's it's a bit uh, out there kind of idea but um maybe it was the real american werewolf in london oh cambridge American Wolf from Cambridgeshire. Mm -hmm. There's the sequel. Maybe, maybe, the sequel. Um, but there was a sequel. That was in Paris. Yeah. Is, On a US Air Force like, base. Looks like Snoopy. Maybe it was something to do with the US. Right, so one of their personnels come over, full moon. Yeah. Went off for a jaunt. Yeah. There's a whole film there as well. Yeah. US yeah. fighter pilots who are werewolves. American yeah. werewolf Wolf pilot squadron. <laughs> is there one? Oh, is this, a, this, a, this is a movie. That would be good. I'd watch that. So, to kind of round off on this, on Dogman, so highly unlikely in the UK that Dogman is a thing. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? I Not think from... the only way it could be a thing in this country is if it was along the lines of supernatural or okay. otherworldly. Okay. Mm. I don't think it's... I don't don't think right. we've got the okay. room in this country to have a... Okay, so we, we reckon that we've probably rounded up and dog yeah. their well, whole well, idea. Please, 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 prove me wrong. Prove yeah. me wrong. Yeah, Send in your photograph. <laughs> yeah, if you've got a photograph of Dogman or a sighting or a tale to tell us, contact the Now We Know show and let us know all about it, you know? And if you can get into the studio, then come in and, uh, and we'd be more than happy to interview you and do a podcast. Have a, have a chat. Have a chat. So, Glenn, we've discussed Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. We've now discussed Dogman. Another one that comes to mind is Mothman. Is Ooh. is that something you Ooh. you know about? Ooh, I know, I know is about that, Mothman. Is yes. that something you'd like to come back and tell us about? Absolutely. Because Absolutely. I am quite intrigued about Mothman. Don't forget yeah. the Aliens episode we did. Yeah, we did Aliens with with Glenn. At this rate, you're going to get a special badge for coming yeah. in. So the, uh, yeah. the New Jersey Pine Barrens it is somewhere I definitely want to get to visit. So. Okay. Is that to do with Mothman? Is that's it? actually no. Sorry, I'm completely off there. Um, that's the Jersey Devil. Oh, Ooh. another one, the Jersey another Devil. One. Yeah, Mothman so, was was somewhere else. Teasing us. But, uh, teasing, teasing us. Yeah, the Jersey Devil. That's that's a pretty freaky one as well. And there's some amazing evidence on that as well. Okay, well we're gonna hoof patterns. We, on we, we, roof. Oh, right, we're gonna have to come back. We're gonna have to come back mm. on that one. This sounds fascinating. Right. So, that brings us to Quote of the Week. All right. Has anyone got a quote they would like to share? Uh, I don't know if this is a particular quote, but when I went to get some petrol this morning, yeah. I happened to see... <laughs> this is really funny. If you get the newspapers, when you come to a... Um, for those people that are listening abroad, outside the UK, when we go to a petrol station or a garage... Uh, in the UK, just as you go in the doorway, they tend to have that big spread of all the newspapers. Yeah, mm. they got all the Sunday newspapers, and bless the the Daily Star or the Sunday whatever it is, Sport or something like that. There was one, and the headline just sprang out, and it said, "Aliens spiked my angel delight." So that's, <laughs> that's my quote from from today. <laughs> yeah. Aliens spiked my that's angel delight. That's certainly a funny one. <laughs> 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 That's my quote of the day. Did, did you read the article no, about it? No, 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 no. no. It's just not, I just uh, you, all you need to do is read a title like that and leave the rest of your imagination. <laughs> so, what about you, Zach? You're the one who's instigated the because we are. This is actually the first podcast. This is our fifty-first podcast. Yes, isn't that's it? true. So we're just starting our next half century. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh. So thank you, Glenn, for, for being our special guest. Absolutely stoked. But so, what here. is your quote of the day? That's why I asked people. Okay. <laughs> I didn't come in with a quote. I had no, my head. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. why I was I was opening the conversation oh, if right. anyone had one to right. share. Well, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be uh, armed for for next podcast. Yes, but yes. The, the, the best I can offer is aliens spiked my angel delight. There we are. What about you, Glenn? Well, uh, I have I do have a bit of a quote, also a bit of a question. Ooh. Okay, you ready? Yeah, yeah Go we're for ready it. For Who let the dogs out? <laughs> You did. You let Snoopy out the bag. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all you're getting from me. Okie dokie. If you enjoyed this podcast, please like and subscribe to this channel and comment below any suggestions of topics or activities you'd like to listen to in future episodes. That's a big dog man goodbye from Zach. It's a howling goodbye from Bob. That was a good one. I've got that. <laughs> was that Snoopy? <laughs> And that's a goodbye from Snoopy and a goodbye from me. <laughs> goodbye, Glenn, and thanks for coming in once again. Thank you. You can find the Now We Know Show podcast on YouTube, Spotify, Amazon Music and Apple Podcasts. Check out the Zach Wild Productions social media pages on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, or visit the Zach Wild Productions website at www.zachwildproductions.com. Please get in contact, we'd love to find out how you're listening to us. So get in touch in the comments and don't forget to check out Zach Wild Productions on Patreon to become an official ZWP patron today. 